Hello again from Dallas, Texas, Dr. Albert Lee. We're going to go through some of the equipment that is going to be in the OR, um, hopefully all assembled and laid out for you um, before the patient comes into the room. The uh, first thing I'd like to go through is, and all this equipment should be sterile um, coming out, is the Sol Sol you know, Solomon Twist Drill Kit. There's a couple pieces we'll need. We'll need to set up the reduction tubing to get the drills to fit in appropriately without any wobble. And the uh, first first item of the reduction tubing we'll need to assemble is this this piece that will go in. And then there's two reduction tubes that we'll use. I'll show you how they fit into the other system. But these these components are important. And there's a large reducing tube and a small reducing tube. Obviously, for the biopsy needle, which is the same as the small twist drill, we'll need the small reducing tube. But for our initial drilling, we'll need the large reducing tube. And we'll also want the stop. Um, nut on there just to help from plunging too deep and we'll measure off of that as well okay but you can see clearly that you need the reducing tubes and we'll use this piece in just a minute now we have the arc system the multi-purpose arc system and you notice on the top we have a ruler which will be sterile which we'll need later okay and then the other piece that we'll need and then this will have to be given to the circulating nurse is this adapter for the Mayfield swivel head and I typically assemble this, there's an Allen um, bolt here, I typically assemble this where the attachment to the Lexel frame is facing the same direction as where the swivel head adapter will go and I'll tighten that appropriately and I'll set that off to the side shortly. Once, once, once we're done with that component and that's thrown off the field, the rest of these components should be sterile and these will be the two reference pieces that will determine our vertical and also on this notch our anterior posterior location so I'll set those to the side and this will be all be in a sterile field and then you want this screwdriver on that sterile field as well and then underneath here we'll have there's two rings that we use for the DBS cases which we should not need for these cases and then you'll have the arc itself okay and on top of the arc itself are the two components that determine the depth of biopsy and I'll show you how to assemble that shortly. Okay. When, and this, this should be all on a separate table as it is here. And when we start assembling these pieces, it's very important that everything is in the correct direction. So it'd be ideal for the scrub nurse, but, all, but definitely for the physician, that these pieces get assembled as you're going to use them. And you will always use them in this manner where the ring is coming towards you. We emphasize the assembly of, of the pieces that basically give the reference of 190 um, in, re, in regards to the standard Lexel offset. Okay, And these two pieces here kind of define the depth of your um, working distance on your biopsy or your electrode placement. And that zero is very important as far as locking that in because that is the zero depth from a 190 offset to the top of this ring here. This piece here will be used to um, work with this, this top piece, but this piece can be variable and your depth is still going to be 190 to the top of this. The reduction, the reduction pieces that we talked about earlier slide in and screw down. And those all come again flashed. And then this piece here can be placed in here if, if desired. And those two will line up as, as, as needed. And again, the reducing tubes will go inside. You have a large reducing tube that will fit in there, and it, it will slide down to the, to the other one if, if needed. And this piece, again, is not the bottom piece can slide up and down appropriately as needed. Okay. It helps to offer some stability. The next, the next portion that we need to work on is um, after we get our coordinates set up from our planning station, we'll have to adjust the X and the Y. And what we'll want to do is we can pick an arbitrary number for our lateral target X, and we'll make that today 90. And so what we want to do is set both, and we pretty much always use the X as just standard, not the Y. We'll set that to 90. And it's very important that you have somebody double check your 
your off how you localize your offsets in every direction AP lateral and vertically ring and arc because as you're screwing this in it can change a little bit and if you're tired or your eyes are tired it could be difficult then our left side we want to set to 90 again and so we'll use the numbers that we see not the numbers that are upside down because how we determine that is going to be different and the other thing we'll notice is that this piece is not on properly and this piece was upside down so that was actually fortunate that we caught that so again we want to make sure that's properly placed we want to set that at 90 as well now the reason there's a piece here that moves laterally is this lets us place it open and then as we clamp it down it will clamp onto these rings here so it will give us some flexibility as far as placement once we get it set on the coordinate system again from our coordinates that we planned we can preset this to 90 even before the patient's already locked in and we'll just set that as an arbitrary vertical number for today again we want to have somebody check to make sure that we have placed it at the right spot and this one at 92 I'm sorry 90 as well excuse me okay you notice that all the reference marks that we have all have ticks that are one whether it's a millimeter or degree that are able to be adjusted when we get to our final stage after we've played the Lexel re frame reference on we'll deal with this ring and this ring will count by twos and that's very important to remember and although it seems obvious if you have a slight bit of fatigue or carelessness you'll be off on this coordinate system now we're going to go and talk about locking the patient's head into the Mayfield head holder adapter and we'll do that on our next video thank you